is there any more you want to elaborate on the, the whole history of the band? Well, yeah, uh, there's this wonderful place in uh, Darby. In Darby. Actually, I'm gonna grab that sweater just to show up. Yeah, go get it. Yeah. Because free this, advertising. Word, is, word of mouth advertising. This is. It's what they did it is free advertising, but it's deserved advertising. It is. Because we owe it all to this school. We really do. And, uh, <laughs> and Vega Regu. School, and Vega Regu uh, made us all come together and uh, do this and yes. so many other projects and stuff. And oh, yeah. yeah. That's how this happened. Vega Not only just music related stuff, but just, yeah. you know, just a bunch of friends oh, yeah. meeting up, really. And. Uh, so yeah, I my story how I ended up there, kind of uh, is very related with the story of Fjorn, one of our songs that you will hear. Uh, but yeah, I was I was uh, still uh, really focused on this music dream, this musical right. goals of making, you know, writing music and being a musician. But I didn't have, uh, I didn't have a studio. I didn't have any bandmates. I had a couple of friends who were interested in music, but no one mm -hmm. that I played with, and no one that was like seriously doing this. So I was just yeah. sitting by myself writing songs with the easy drummer, and I had this <laughs> terrible, yeah. uh, terrible, really terrible apartment. Uh, with thin walls, so I didn't dare to like scream or sing. Right. I was like whispering, screaming, and just I was writing a lot of songs. That was at least good, but uh, right, yeah. it wasn't really going anywhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I wasn't. I guess I wasn't too happy about my situation. And I saw this ad on Facebook. Hmm. I was just scrolling, and I saw this ad of a song where you play drums. That's right. And uh, <laughs> Thomas Pericone was singing, I guess he wrote the song. He wrote the song, yeah. yeah. Uh, with yeah. Vanity March. Vanity March was the name of yeah. the song. Yeah. Awesome song. It's just one of those songs that you hear and you can't forget about it. And that's exactly what happened. Like, oh, yeah. I saw this ad uh, and it was... Yeah, it was sort of a melodic... Yeah. Uh, neoclassical death metal yeah. song that we, we, like we that. had done at the school. Yeah. Um, and I'm right there with you. I got that riff in my head all the time. Yeah. Still, yeah. Four years later. And, and for me, f sitting in my shitty apartment, <laughs> uh, feeling terrible and bored. Yeah. And I saw the ad, and I just thought, like, okay, this place could, you know, this could, this could be a step from my chair in front of my stupid computer onto a stage, you know, what if that's me, you know, yeah. one year from now, what if that's... But I didn't really go through with it at, at that time, but as I said, the song just... No. It's in the back of your mind. So that was just uh, laying there, that idea of, of taking it to somewhere. But I, yeah, I was also sick of school. I was yeah, just well. done with school, and I was just... I, 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 I thought that... that I'm never going back, not even a, on a music school, because it's still going to be a school and it's not my thing. But then I went some days and uh, I was uh, sitting and watching. I was not sober and I was sitting and watching a Deep Purple live show <laughs> from back when the um, live shows were good. Yeah. And I was it, one of my favorite Deep Purple songs, uh, Child in Time. That's their best one, yeah. in my humble opinion. Obviously, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's a great song. That's one of those songs that can make you feel well, really everybody just, Everybody you know, on that too. And Ian, Ian Gillen yeah, keeps saying his yeah. heart out. Richie Blackmore tore it up. Yeah. Um, I still think Ian Pace is incredibly underrated as a drummer, even with as much credit as he does yeah. get. But that, yeah, that song, that, especially yeah, the Live in Japan, or yeah. Made in Japan, whatever they called it, that yeah. rendition of that song, holy shit. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. I feel you. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember much of that night. Because I was naturally, yeah, well, I wasn't in, a, in the best place. No, but anyways, no. I was I was watching that song, and it was, or I was watching the whole show. But it was mm. during that song that I just had this realization that you know, 
fuck this, fuck this place and these friends and whatever. Let's just, I, I need to do music because this yeah. is, this is uh, so important to me. Yeah. And uh, I guess some of the things that held me back is that no one else thought it was that important. Everyone else thought it was just a, a, not it's just fine, a hobby. Yeah, hobby right. yeah, but not not even that. They thought it was like a problem that I was so concerned about <laughs> doing music. They just want me to have a job and and have good grades and you know. But to me, it's, it was always been something more. And I, well, yeah, if you were yeah. that invested in music that the people around you were thinking it might be a problem, and that's exactly mm. how you know it's what you should be doing. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. And you know, you can't you can't expect everyone to understand it. Like no, if no. you have a passion, you have to bleed for it. And yeah, and you have that. And I've done my share of bleeding for this, I guess. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes you have. I mean, look You're at You're not done know. yet though. No. No, no, no you're never done. Yeah. But that's <clears throat> exactly uh what happened because you went from that mm. to having your own studio here, which is amazing. Yeah, this, this this is also a dream come true. Yeah. But uh but yeah, let's put a pin in that, but but uh for me going to the school, I uh, yeah, I was watching this song and having this realization and I put in my application the day after. Uh I think yeah. yeah, either the same night or probably the day after. Yeah, but audition tape and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was that yeah. too, yeah. And yeah, I had a lot of stuff that I'd recorded by myself and like small videos and um, whatever. And yeah. uh, I just sent it to uh, Vega, which was our teacher, mm. ended up being our teacher. Yeah, he's not uh, And at that time, I considered myself a guitar player. Right. Uh, but having no friends who played <laughs> music, you know. That's what makes you a bass. That's where all basses come from. Yeah, yeah. Where all basses come from. Uh, so, sure. and yeah, so so I had this bass, which I've had forever. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, And I played bass on my own stuff, of course. And I wrote that also in my application that, yeah. uh, you know, I play all of this stuff. But I right. mainly play right. guitar and vocals. and yeah. like, and then they got right. called me up and said like, "Hey, what if I, what if I give you a position as a bass player?" And Perfect. I said, "Yeah, of course. Why not? Uh, no problem." So I got into the school uh, as a bass player. <laughs> yeah, as a bass player. That's how yeah. every bass player story is. Yeah. Like, you're in, initially a guitarist, and then you just say, yeah, no, but nobody bass. else played bass, so I picked it up. Yeah, you're right. And that's I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, I actually <laughs> thought that." Uh, I didn't want my story to be like that. So when I <laughs> got asked to be a bass player, I thought like, okay, but now I'm seriously going to play bass. I'm not just going to do it as, you yeah. know, like a charity or mm -hmm. something. I'm going to actually play this instrument because I respect it and it's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's like it's such an important piece of the music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it is. It really is. And your your bass lines. And well, um, thank you. Yeah, I, no. uh, I really, I've really gotten into it. like. When we jam or, or whatever, I I, uh, I don't pick up the bass because not because I know no one else will. No. I pick it up because I really want to play exactly. bass, you know. And it's uh, it's such an overlooked uh, thing. Yeah. But yeah, got into the school as a bass player, met you guys, uh, and really started taking music seriously. And I felt like I was, you know seen as a musician as well and that was yeah, yeah. awesome <laughs> that was like you know 19 years doing music being really invested in music and i didn't hear uh, i didn't feel like anyone heard my songs or anything mm. until i got there and then things just sort of blew up because people yeah. with so many compliments and so much uh, will you know, yeah. to to make things happen. It, yeah, it was great. That was yeah, it was a, perfect uh, it was a life for changer, really you know, for me at least. Special thing that we yeah. have here in Scandinavia. Yeah, uh, because that gave us that springboard to exactly Absolutely, where yeah. we are now. So yeah. you know, thank you to Buskud. Focus good work, is good, huh? I do. For everything they have done for yeah. us. Um, Absolutely, I can't thank them enough, honestly. Yeah, me, uh, me either. Even uh, even if the police had to show up in the teacher's lounge when I was working there the year after and uh, politely yeah. asked me to leave the country because the Norwegian government screwed up the paperwork. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, yeah, that's a story in itself. Yeah. yeah, but it didn't break up our band. No, 
Let's did away a little bit, and yeah. several years later, here we are. Um, yeah, how many years? years? It's it's going on three years. Yeah, no, it's, it's going it's on three. Been, years. Actually, it's, it's been, been three years. Three yeah, years. it's been over th- since it's we met. Yeah, because we we graduated <laughs> in uh, 2018. Uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what. Yeah, it's actually over more than three yeah. years now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is not such a long time, but it's surprisingly long. It yeah, it goes fast, man. Yeah, it does. It really does. It goes fast, mm. and so has all this time between us talking about this live stream concert and actually yeah. fucking doing oh, it. Yeah. So here, here we are. It's going to be. Finally. Um, not exactly sure how long it's going to be. Somewhere on yeah. somewhere between a half hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be four and four songs. Maybe and, even uh, longer because yeah. those uh, those guitar awesome. solos just get longer and longer. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I tend to just let them go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They will. They can. So those, yeah. Yeah. Even, let's just talk about that, that for a good. for a minute, because that's one of the things that I'm really looking forward uh, to. Well, I guess it's kind of weird that I'm look, looking forward to it, but it's just like showing off the amazing talent yeah. that these guys have. There's two others. And they're not here now. You are mainly the drummer. I'm the bass uh, bass player and uh, vocalist yes. mainly. And there's two guitar players, Alan Andersen and Torbjörn Surdal. Uh, Who we affectionately call Ug. Yeah, Ug. he's a caveman. He's a, you'll see what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, right? you'll understand. You'll understand. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> there's there's so amazing at. Uh, guitar and not just leads but you know mainly leads yeah. that's where they can really show off uh, and they will show off yeah that's they can't really, help in it in a good way and it's awesome <clears throat> and it's but awesome it's, I kind of just chemistry. told them like yeah yeah that's that's just, there that's yeah. been I mean that's how we started this project in yeah. the first place like that chemistry's always been there mm. and you know to, to